The following is a presentation of TFNN. It is now time for the Diagnostic Trading Hour with your host, Daryl Martin. Martin. All right, folks, welcome on back here to the Diagnostic Trading Hour. And uh, checking out where the markets are at right now. We got the S&P. It is up 5.75. We got the Russell up 7.5. The NASDAQ up 9.5 points right now with the Dow up 39. Oil is currently down 7 ticks on the day with natural gas down one and a half percent. Corn is down six and a half with soybeans pretty flat on the day compared to yesterday's settlement. Only down a few ticks on the day. Euro dollar currently down 12 pips. Aussie dollar down 38. Pound dollar down 18. Dollar Canadian is up 30 pips on the day with U.S. franc up 40 pips on the day. Euro yen is up 81 pips. Pound yen up 58. Dollar yen up 75 pips on the day. Gold is currently at five, a little over five and a half points right now. We got silver is uh, pretty flat on the day. And copper is down about a third of a percent, so pretty flat for copper as well. And that gets us caught up right now on the uh, events, uh, or basically the current market. So let's go ahead and check out what news events we got that have happened today and what events we should be planning on. Well, this morning we had core retail sales. They did come in worse than expected. They came in at a zero on a 0.5%. Retail sales came in at 0.4% on expectation of 0.7%. And uh, the Empire State Manufacturing Index, though, came in positive at 9.5 on an expectation of 5.2. Despite that, we did see a little bit of a drop in the market, but nothing that major. And overall, all the indices are still positive. So it did not have a major impact on the indices as a whole. And uh, let's see right here if we can find uh, a couple pieces where I can open up a chart for you right on here and we'll go ahead and look at um, the one currency pair I was sort of looking at on this one today was either you know, euro dollar or pound dollar either one of those and um, so we'll go ahead and pull up the euro dollar on this one there we go and we'll look at the uh, movement on the news it was not that really that not that big of a move not near the move we usually expect on this report but overall, let's check it out and uh, you know see if it met within the expectations of at least the average range. And uh, let's see, we got uh, looking at it. Seventy percent of the time, your dollar moves greater than fifty pips, and the average move is sixty pips within two hours. So did that line up? Well, right over here, we go on down to the eight thirty report. So right there before the uh, release comes on out. And we can go take this over to 10.30. So use my little ruler to measure the movement there. And uh, so if we go over here to 10.30, and we find the highest high since that point, which was in about 30, 40 minutes. Of that, we got our 50 pips. We got a little more than 50. So we got about 52 pips right there. And um, so looking at our, you know, our low to our high, we did expect 50 pips. That is the, you know, like a majority of the time, 70% of the time it hits that. It did not hit its 60 pip range. Uh, went on up, and then, you know, if you had, say, 10 o'clock expirations, I mean, it, it came back down a little bit. Wouldn't have killed you on that one. But, uh, you know, we're looking for a move, ideally, that it hits the deviation. We didn't quite um, hit it. We were looking, you know, um, I really thought that if we hit zero, we'd have a lot bigger move than that. So we wanted a zero or a 1.0. We did get the zero which uh, went ahead and drove up the euro dollar, which means uh, weakened the dollar, okay? And that drove that on up. And so we did at least get our 50 pip move, and we could have got out of that trade. Uh, but pretty close to break even, maybe a small profit on the trade as well, depending upon exactly what strikes you chose. You should have got a decent little profit on the trade if you did a straddle on that on Nadex. Um, let's see. So that uh, wraps that up let's see what else we have coming up this week just what news events do you need to be aware of and uh, tonight we have uh, the monetary policy meeting minutes coming out of Australia there is a lot of just rumors out there that there may be you know a drop in the interest rate and so those meeting minutes sort of give a clue um, if they're going to continue uh, to drop that interest rate and that's what uh, people will be looking for on the Aussie we should expect sub movement but not you know 
anything that's massive. And so with that, uh, I mean, just be aware of that tonight. The CPI on the, the New Zealand dollar is probably more impactful if you're a New Zealand dollar trader. That report's going to come out tonight. You usually get about 40, 50 pips on that move um, on the New Zealand dollar CPI report that's going to come out a little bit before that at 645. But at 930, we have the Aussie report coming out. And uh, I wouldn't try to straddle it or strangle it. I'd just be aware of it. And let's scroll over. We'll go ahead and uh, check out the rest of the upcoming week. Big reports you need to be aware of for tomorrow. We got the UK CPI and the US Core CPI. UK CPI coming out at 4:30. US Core CPI coming out at 8:30. And uh, when the US uh, when the when the pound uh, CPI comes out, we're going to have one, two, three, four, five, six pound dollar announcements come out at the exact same time as that CPI number. So that's probably going to be a good straddle or strangle for us. The average range on that within two hours of the release is 72 pips. So uh, looking for probably a 6 o'clock expiration on that trade, 6 a.m. expiration on like straddling the spreads, maybe a 4 to 6 uh, expiration. You could also look at the 7 a.m. They start at 11 p.m. So you could look at 6 a.m. and 7 a.m. will be the two spreads I'd be looking at. And, again, you're looking for, you know, a 70-pip move on average on that trade. So that could be just a, an excellent um, potential trade for you. And then um, we also have the German Zoo Economic Sentiment Report. That one's coming out at 5 a.m. That is one to be aware of. Also, there's five European reports coming out at 5 a.m. So we should get some decent, um, basically, euro volatility happening around 5 o'clock. So, uh, just, again, be aware. Not so much tradable, but 20 or 30 pips solid um, after those uh, reports come out. And then on the euro dollar. And then looking on over at the U.S., we're going to have the uh, core CPI and the manufacturing sales, <coughs> pardon me, and the CPI come out all at once. And um, so with that, you know, there's a few different things we can look at. But uh, the, the most often impacted, and I, I think this is sort of the best way to look at it, is um, the euro dollar. 79% of the time it moves 60 pips. The average move on the pound dollar is 70, but two hour like it's average uh it only hits 50 pips like 45 percent of the time which means when it moves it really really moves it moves even more than any of the other pairs but it doesn't move as often okay it doesn't you know it doesn't move as often as the euro dollar moves so i'd be again focusing on the euro dollar for that report tomorrow morning over on the u.s core cpi and uh, we're going down to the U.K. Uh, meeting minutes. Uh, that's going to happen on Wednesday. And uh, Canada is going to have their interest rate announcement coming out as well on Wednesday. So let's go ahead and check out Wednesday real quick and get the details up for that. Um, Pound is going to have a lot of things. You know, they got their climate count change. They got their asset purchase facility votes. They got their bank rate votes. They got their um, average earnings index and their earnings un unemployment rates. So they got like five news announcements happening at once. Three of those are high impact. We should expect a lot of pound of volatility on Wednesday at 4:30 in the morning, and uh, the biggest one being that meeting minutes. Like what comes out of that, and uh, we're expecting it to come in at 009. If two votes on either side uh, hit that, we could get some major volatility out of it. But uh, the average move on that, 90% uh, of the time, it moves 50 pips. And the range is 80 pips. So it's a major high statistic mover. And it could be a really, really good trade for us. You know, it's a major high statistic mover. Pound dollar, 4.30 a.m. could be a great straddle trade. Should work out excellent. Um, and uh, you don't always get it where it lines up where you get 90% plus moves 50 pips. And then the average is 80 pips. So I like that. You know, there's some other numbers that move a little bit more. But that's the highest overall combination. And uh, once we get that, we got uh, as well on the 16th there. Sorry, the 17th, um, we're going to have uh, Canada, U.S., um, just like releasing one announcement after the other. Okay, Bank of Canada is going to have their rate statement. They're going to have their overnight rate. Bernanke is going to come on. He's going to testify before conference, Congress at 10 o'clock on Wednesday. Better be aware of that event. And uh, so, and they'll actually release the text of the testimony 90 minutes earlier than the speaking time. So this is something that's really important to be aware of. His testimony, he's going to come in and do a testimony. Of course, there's going to be some Q&A, which will be unscripted, that will cause even more volatility at 10. But at 8.30, his testimony, his statement, is going to be released. So don't be tricked by thinking that the even though he testifies at 10, that's when all the volatility is going to happen. It's going to start back at 8.30. And um, so a lot of volatility to expect on that. But again, 10 o'clock is the uh, Canada rate statement. 
And then after he does his basic testimony, then he'll go into open Q&A, unscripted. That'll cause more. Then at 10.30, the monetary policy report is going to come out. So the report behind the statement is going to come out and uh, add to the volatility further. And then at 11.15, Bank Canada is going to have their press conference. So they're just getting it all out of the way. Rate statement, overnight rate, monetary policy statement, press conference, boom, 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 boom. Uh, so just be ready for some volatility on the CAD dollar. Um, that's what we're going to be looking for. That's going to be our main, you know, big trade uh, for that day. And, you know, you may even want to start out even earlier because Bernanke's testimony is coming out at 8.30. You might want to look at even possibly a 3 p.m. Um, expiration, you know, straddle on that because it should be a pretty big moving day between Bernanke testifying and all the Canada reports coming out. Uh, and then, you know, they're coming out like one after the other after the other. So you can really take advantage of that volatility. Um, it moves on average about 84 pips two hours after. 70% of the time it moves at least 50 pips. But that's not adding in Bernanke testifying at the same time. So it's going to add even more volatility to that report that we're going to have um, on Wednesday. And let's see here. There will be some other things come out, but nothing major to really worry about. And then we're just going over a little bit further, and we'll check out uh, what we got on Thursday. Let's see here. We're going to have our retail sales in Britain, and uh, I'm going to look those up for you. And then we'll have our Canada Core CPI on Friday. Those are the two big reports you need to be aware of. But, but uh, we'll have the retail sales in Britain. It's only one report coming out, but that one report does have a decent impact on the pound dollar. Usually 70% of the time it moves 50 pips, and it moves on average about 70 uh, pips total as the average range. So we should easily expect the 50 pips and then some on top of that report. And let's see, I'm just looking over at the different trades. Um, going to get unemployment claims. Hasn't been as big of an event lately. Hasn't really been a big market mover. Um, and then Bernanke, though, he's going to come in. He's going to do another testifying. So it's Bernanke week. And he's testifying on the semi-annual mon- monetary policy report before the Senate. So obviously um, the questions are not known. Unscripted things will be said. That will cause market volatility in, in commodities and forex and indices. And uh, just be aware. And um, that's where you want to be watching, like, you know, C-SPAN or maybe a feed, like a financialjuice.com or something like that, where you can just sort of see what's coming out. And uh, so Bernanke's testifying on Thursday at 10 a.m., and he's also testifying on Wednesday at uh, 10 a.m. So Wednesday 10 a.m., it's coming out an hour and a half before. Um, the actual statement's going to come out an hour and a half before. So that's really, really important. On Thursday... Uh, it's basically it's a two-part statement. He's going to read a prepared statement that will be be made available at 10. So the one on Thursday, the statement's made at 10 o'clock, and the, the statement is made available at 10 o'clock. So, all right, we'll be right back after this break. Stay right there. says you can't take it with you. TFNN says you can. With your mobile device and TFNN's live radio streams, TFNN has put it all in the palm of your hands. No special apps to download. No subscription fees for live radio or Tiger TV streams. We say you can. Now let's go over to the dollar because the dollar is going to be the generator. It is the generator of basically higher dollar, lower market. And what the dollar has done in this whole uptrend, folks, it's just gone sideways. The way it works, folks, is this. We say you can. The Tiger Financial News Network. Smart investors and professional traders know you can. TFNN.com. Educating investors.
with the launch of Tiger TV. TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, David White, Larry Pesamento, Andy Hecht, Victor Jones, or Terrell Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. McEwen Mining is a high-growth, mid-tier producer in the Americas with a market capitalization of $1 billion. Experienced mining executive Rob McEwen, as chairman, CEO, and president, owns 25% of the outstanding shares of McEwen Mining and has put in place an ambitious business plan with the goal of qualifying for inclusion in the S&P 500 by 2015. With $70 million in cash and liquid assets as of the end of 2012 and completely debt-free, McEwen Mining is poised for growth. Production in 2013 is forecasted to grow at 24%, reaching 130,000 gold equivalent ounces. And over the next three years, McEwen Mining projects that their production will increase to 290,000 gold equivalent ounces, almost a three-fold increase from last year's totals. If you'd like to find out more about McEwen Mining, click on their banner on the front page of TFNN.com or check them out on the NYSE or TSX under the symbol MUX. Patterns, profits, and peace of mind. Are you looking for a precision edge in the market? Something that can stack the odds in your favor? Then look into Larry Pesavento's trading newsletter. Patterns, profits, and peace of mind. In each weekly issue, Larry explains what's going to happen in the markets based on the pattern he sees developing and gives you actionable trade ideas based on those patterns. Plus, you'll get his detailed analysis on a variety of markets and sectors, including stocks, treasury bonds, the gold market, oil, the dollar, the Forex market, and more. You'll get access to all the patterns Larry is seeing in the markets, plus the Astro Harmonics and powerful Bradley stock market model that Larry utilizes for less than $5 a day. An extremely potent combination that will give you the edge you've been looking for. Try Patterns, Profits, and Peace of Mind absolutely free for two full weeks. That's an $85 value. Yours free when you register right now. Get Larry's Patterns, Profits, and Peace of Mind. And get the edge you've been looking for. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Daryl, take your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. All right, folks, come on back here to the Diagnostic Trading Hour. And so we're just going through, we're checking out everything, and... Um, Got the Bernanke testimonies lined up this week. Again, Wednesday, the report comes out an hour and a half before. His testimony will be released an hour and a half before the actual conference. Thursday, it'll come out at the exact same time. Okay? Um, both of them will have unscripted Q&A. As well, we'll have the Philly Fed Manufacturing Index on Thursday at the same time. No big stats for trading that. Just be aware of it. It's going to be, you know, it, it does impact the market. And then, uh, let's see, going on over and checking out Friday. Friday, we have core CPI in Canada. So what does that mean? Does it mean anything? Um, yeah, Canadian core CPI has a decent move, but not enough, uh, not enough that I would be willing to straddle that trade. Um, it only moves 50 pips 25% of the time. If anything, I'd be more likely to butterfly it, just because 75% of the time it doesn't move 50 pips. The average range of 57 pips, what that means is when it's off, it's really off, and that means it flies. So either it's just going to take off and move like 70, 80, 100 pips, with, and that's why that range is up at 57, or it's just going to stay flat and do a whole lot of nothing. Okay? So I would expect more of the or on that. Uh, not really the best tradable um, straddleable <laughs> or stringable trade uh, out there. But uh, that does give you some, you know, just information on that one. 
And then, you know, the report does come out at 8.30, so it makes it really hard to go in and do butterflies before it, but you could butterfly into it for, like, say, a 9 o'clock expiration would be a possibility, or a 10 o'clock expiration. So those would be the two possible trades on it, um, just because I don't like the stats. I, I mean, you can be very aware. Maybe you could find another pair that gives you a great um, strangle, and you can go in and you know, do a strangle butterfly, straddle butterfly at the same time, just in case. But usually I don't expect it to move that much. It doesn't move that much that often, so therefore it's not the one I'd be looking to go in for a big move. Uh, and so you got to combine both how often does it move 50 pips with what is the average range. When you put those two pieces together, you have a powerful, powerful like piece of information. Because if it doesn't move 50 pips that often, but the average range is above 50 pips, that means that when it moves, it moves a lot. But when it doesn't move, it barely moves at all. So hopefully that makes sense to you. And... Uh, all right, so now let's uh, put a few more things in here. Let's check out where everything is on the day. We'll get on over here. We got, let's go ahead and uh, let's start off on our indices because they've just been doing a whole lot of nothing right now. But uh, we moved on up on ES, and we're up at the S&P right now at the half deviation level just hanging out, okay? Literally just hanging out right there at the top. And uh, so we got the barely missed breakout X there right there on ES. We got look like deep, like YM across the board. We're getting a lot of those, and uh, also the broad market index. If you pull that up, so right here I got the broad market index up. This is the net shares of the New York Stock Exchange. So they take all the shares on New York Stock Exchange. How many are up for the day? How minus how many are down for the day? And uh, sort of trending down at this point. We had a little trend up. It was going. And, um, you know, we can draw ourselves a nice little trend line right down here. And we see we sort of broke that trend line right at about 1 o'clock or so. So right about when the show started here. And uh, really started going sideways. It was going sideways before that. But now it actually started moving down a little bit. So just be use caution at this point. I mean, it doesn't mean the market can't continue higher, but I don't have a lot of confidence in it. Uh, I'm really doing a whole lot more right now. And remember, if we use our five-tick deviation stop method, something to always keep in mind, okay, is right over here. Let's look at this. All right, so we got our low, 1676.75, the low of that. So if we take five ticks off of that, we're going to get 1675.5. And so we'll go over here, 1675.5. We got right to that level. We did not break it. Okay, we did not break the five ticks below yet. So if we break that level, that's when I'm bearish choppy. Okay, I'm no longer bullish at all. Right now I'm using a little caution uh, just because the market really does seem to be slowing down across the board. And you know, if we look at the under indices, we're going to see a lot of this lining up. And I see it breaking that trend line that it's had up all morning. I mean, it had that quick drop. But then, you know, the run back up after the news and everything. So now let's go ahead and let's check out over here. Let's look at the Dow. See how it's looking. And we're getting basically the, uh, the same thing, the same setup on the Dow. And uh, we'll go more into that when we get right back from this break. Has the current market volatility continue to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's n a d e x.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of tfnn.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors.
With the stock market flirting with all-time highs and volatility back, now is the perfect time for a two-week free trial to Market Insights. On Monday, June 24th, Tom O'Brien closed out all five open positions in his daily newsletter, Market Insights, with all trades being profitable and ranging from a 2.23% gain all the way to more than an 11% gain in just one position for an incredible 32.7% profit combined between the five trades. Let Tom O'Brien's years of market experience work for you. If you'd like to see for yourself what kind of trading newsletter Tom O'Brien delivers to his clients each morning, then now is a perfect time to sign up for a two-week free trial to his daily newsletter, Market Insights. In a volatile market like we currently have, the potential for fast market moves like we've seen recently is a trader's dream. So don't wait any longer. Sign up for your two-week free trial to Market Insights today at the front page of TFNN.com. With over three decades of commodity trading experience, Andy Hecht has developed a system that combines both technicals and fundamentals. He calls this approach Technomental, and now you can put it to work for yourself with his brand new service, the Technomental Commodity Report. In this weekly newsletter, which comes out each Thursday morning, Andy gives you his analysis of the market price direction bias using fundamentals and then specific trade recommendations including entry and exit points using technicals. The recommendations in the newsletter are always based on stocks and ETFs, so a futures account is not required, and Andy will often use options in the recommendations as well. Andy will tell you where to get in, where to get out, and he'll outline the risk-reward profile for all recommendations. To get your month-long free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report by Andy Hecht while locking in the low introductory rate, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. Daryl Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The diagnostic box spread analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels as well as step-by-step -step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex Box Spreads. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. All right, folks, welcome on back here to the Diagnostic Trading Hour. And uh, so looking at the Dow right here, Dow's almost up to half a deviation right there. Didn't quite hit it, but the S&P did. So be aware when one indice hits it and another indice does it. When you're trading U.S. indices, you should be watching all U.S. indice, major U.S. indice charts. NASDAQ, Dow, S&P, Russell. Also, you should be watching the broad market index. And uh, notice how it went up. It tried to break that high again. Could not break through it. Less volume right there falls right on back down. All right, let's go ahead now. Let's roll over. Let's check out the Russell. What do we got going on on the Russell? The Russell moved up. It hit the 0.5. It broke through the 0.5. It went up to 0.7. It even broke a new high there. But you can tell it started to pull on back. Okay? So it started to get that pull back over there. And uh, just be aware of that pullback. And then we got those five ticks on the bar that closes above it. This bar closed above it. What does that make it? Let's see. We got a low of 1,040.4, 1,039.4. Get access to these levels every day on our site in the diagnostic area there. But uh, let's see. 1,040.4 down to 1,039.9. Okay. So the Russell is probably cooked and done. Be very careful on taking any additional trades long on the Russell at this point. It's not only hit a deviation. It's broken that deviation. We still have the broad market index heading in a southward pattern, and uh, the S&P and Nasdaq or S&P and Dow are looking like that. Now 
Let's go and look over the NASDAQ. NASDAQ may be giving us a little bit different story. It's a, it's really trying. I mean, it really, 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 look at this thing. I mean, it just really wants to stay up there. And uh, it's been trying and trying for all it's got. And let's look at the low. we got 3070. This is the bar that closed above. Okay, so that's, um, let's see, that price level line right there. And uh, so it's a nice, uh, basically it's a resistance level I was looking at earlier. We still haven't got to the half deviation. It's really trying to get up here. So we'll see if it's able to make it. Um, it's pushing. Seasonally, we should be up for the day. Uh, but you know what? I mean, we had that negative news come in. We got a lot of earnings coming out after market close. And uh, broad market index is pointing south. This thing is having a hard time. I mean, you basically got double top, triple top, quadruple top. You know, you're going on a hex top right here. And uh, if it doesn't do something soon and break out, it's just gonna it's gonna let all the steam out. So it's just waiting for an excuse. So uh, be very very careful on any long entries at this point. Just uh, make sure you got your you know got your trailing stops in and uh, follow along there. All right. So now we got the indices out of the way. Let's go ahead and let's look over at gold. Okay, I'm gonna check our gold contract out. See what's going on. We got to move right on up to half a deviation. Perfect little line bounced off that. I mean, can you say perfect? I mean, right there. If you weren't doing butterflies today on gold, you were missing out. Look at that. So I mean, literally up and down, up and down two points for hours. I mean, that's just beautiful. Unfortunately, gold's pretty much shut down for the day. But, uh, oh, man, I mean, I wish I could just trade butterflies on that all day long on Nadex. That thing was just going right in a channel pattern. And uh, scalper's dream right there. And uh, and premium collector. Let's go ahead and check out silver. So let's see. On silver, what do we got? Uh, same same thing. We got that big move right there in the morning. Just bam, right off the news. Came right back up to where it was. And just hung out at settlement. And uh, let's go ahead. Let's check out copper. So right here, copper right here. We got it going on. It moved on down to minus half a deviation. A little weaker than the other pairs. Or other, uh, sorry, the other uh, metals right there. And um, working on edging its way back up. Pits closed down, though. And now we can go in and let's check out our ags. And we'll look at oil. We'll wrap these pieces on up. Oil moved on down 0 0.5, 0 0.7, ran up to settlement. Really stalled for a little bit, but decided it was going to go ahead and be a champion break right on through that level. Broke on through the settlement level. Still has not broken the overnight high. Okay? Still not above that overnight high. Hesitating right there. Are there buyers above the market? Huh. I don't know. I'd be very cautious on this. So, I'm right here, right above the market. And, uh, you know, we saw a lot of volume. Look at all this volume. Okay, look at all that volume right there that went into oil on that bar. It's very, very telling. Okay, so if you check out the volume on the oil, on the 10-minute bars, then one of the things that you can really notice on this volume bar right here is it went on up. That volume spiked. Okay, again, it spiked up, and it paused right there, so right there at that level. Let me draw that line on there for you so you can see it. So right here, and that was again that was last night's. You know that was the overnight high that we had. So that's an area you definitely want to chill out. You want to look at things. You might even want to tighten some stops up. Um, you know, you don't have to. I mean, you know, use your rules, use your system, but it's got to find some buyers above this to be able to break out. And they unloaded a lot of volume right here. Okay, which means the guys that drove it on down all night long, and then oil ran up. Bye 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 bye. They got out of it right here. Okay, and they were dumping their oil contracts. That's what that high volume spike means. Okay, and uh, don't be surprised when you see a high volume spike coincide with the reversal, and especially when you're right near a new high and it's not breaking out and making new highs. That's an easy pullback. And uh, so you get that pullback, and you want to get confirmation before you take another entry. You want to have your trolling stops ready to go, and uh, you just you want to pay attention. Don't doubt your trades. Don't doubt your system, but uh, put those pieces together. Um, all right. So 
We're going over here and let's see. We can look at um, natural gas. Uh, natural gas. Uh, we got, let's check the market out. Moved on down to one deviation, then down to one and a half deviations. So just an awesome move right there on natural gas. And trying to look at it and see there. We would have had to move down. We broke through. And uh, let's check this out step by step. And, uh, okay, we got a close below 0.7 right there. We got a close below 1 right here. It closed above and then below again right there. It closed above and then below again right here. And then it moved on down. Did not close below 1.5 deviations. We have our stop 5 ticks above. We basically have our stop right about there. Comes back up, hits it. Natural gas is done for the day. It's cooked, and uh, we're looking on for, you know, basically the next piece. So uh, next trade, next next instrument. I'm done with that instrument. I'm going to find something else that hasn't hit a deviation stop like that. Now, let's go through and let's look at. We got that's our metals. Metals are out of the way. Okay, energies are done. We got our indices out of the way. Uh, let's check out our ags. So over here on ags, what do we got going on? Well, now as we've got to move on down to 0.5, on down to 0.7, and uh, really just a lot of oscillation at this point. The main, the big, easy movement on corn today happened overnight. You sort of missed out if you weren't trading it. Most people aren't trading it. It's not super liquid at night. Not the best thing to trade. So we might want to skip that. We hop on over to soybeans. Soybeans gave you the trade this morning. Man, it just handed it to you. Look at that. Just taken off. It even gave you time to get in. And, I mean, just went to the moon, ran right on up, a perfect deviation move, step by step by step. And so we're going in on this trade. We go long on it over here. So it pulls back, depending on what time. But we can just say right here, you took this entry. So pull back, break out of the previous bar is high, goes in, takes off. When it closes above the deviation level, then you can uh, put a stop right here. And then it goes in and breaks above this deviation level. You can put a stop right here. If it goes in and breaks above this deviation level, we can put a stop right here. And so it goes in. That's one deviation marker right there. Oscillates, comes on back down, hits it, and we're just in chop for the day. We're done on soybeans. But uh, nice, nice move. Um, you're talking catching a solid you know, 12 points. And uh, that's a $600 per contract. Not bad. Uh, move right there over on soybeans. And let's see. So we already checked out the corn market. Didn't get as much uh, action on corn today. Let's go ahead and look at our FX pairs. So over on the Aussie, Aussie moves on down, uh, gives us a little, you know, crazy wild movement last night, but really just stayed, just did a swing trade, bouncing between deviation, 0.5, went a little up to 0.7, back down to 0.5, on down to settlement, back up to 0.5, just swinging back and forth on those levels. We can go on over here to Euro Dollar. And Euro dollar moves all the way down 0 0.5, 0 0.7, back up to 0.5, all the way back up to settlement, and just bouncing all the way around for you. So uh, really uh, cool moves right there on the Euro dollar, and um, nice. It's just smooth because when it closes and it flips, like I said, we either expect oscillation or reversal. We got the reversal, and um, we got it pretty much when we had expected at the news. And this is one. Uh, this is really important to be aware of. Okay, right here. And I talked about, you know, your dollar was the one uh, currency I was looking at on the trade today. And we come up on this timeline over here, 830, where they're going to release the news. Okay? Well, when that happens, if I'm short or long, unless I have defined risk, capped risk, a hedge, like a Nadex spread on it, it's binary. If I'm not hedging out my spot forks position, I probably want to be out of my position. Because that thing went from 3010 to 3050, and they did it like in seconds. Okay? And... You're, just, you're going to get slammed. And that's what diagnostic trading is about. It's about being one step ahead of the markets. It doesn't mean you have to be some super genius. It just means you think about things a step ahead. And But look at this. When the news came out, I mean, I don't care where your stop was. It flew past it. Okay? They ran your stop. And so you should have been out before that. It was already trending up, and then it came out. So if you're going to do that, either buy a spread to hedge, buy a binary to hedge, uh, get out of your position. You know, if you want to stay short, get out and sell a spread because then it has capped risk in and of itself. So there's a lot of different ways that you could do this trade. 
I mean, you can even straddle it if you're short through your dollar. You could buy a couple spreads, you know. Um, so one of them would hedge the other one, and the other one would make money if it went up. And if it went down, it covers the loss on the two longs, and you make money on the way down. You make a ratio spread. So there's a lot of different ways you can combine it, but you need to be aware when that news comes out so you don't just get slammed when that stuff happens. Because it was a great short trade, but it ran its course. And you don't know, up or down, you don't know when that news is coming on out. Now, ideally, you know, the way you trade, however it is that you trade, um, you were able to go in there and flip it around and go uh, the other direction. Uh, as you saw, that definite break in trend line, it turned around, it started heading back up, and maybe you could have got in and you could have went long on the trade uh, before the actual news was released. You may have got into that soon enough. You may not have got into that soon enough. So uh, just depending upon you know, how contrarian you want it to be on that trade. I myself probably would not have went long on that, but I would have went to... Um, you know, protect my position at least if, uh, you know, being short right before news comes out. Now let's go ahead and let's check out the pound dollar. So over here on the pound, let's look at the price action on the pound for the day. And once that chart loads on up there, we'll bring on that back down, back out into focus to 10 minutes. And look at this perfect move right here. 0.5 oscillation. 0.7 bounce. Right back up to settlement on the news. So if you weren't ready for that news, you I mean you got everything you got trading overnight, you lost. Because it just flew right back up. If you're ready, you're fine. And you know what? You had some good long trades you could have hopped in on on this bounces and everything. So there's some different trades there. Just you gotta be aware of the news. And this is I think this is a really important point. Um I talked to some traders this morning. I made this point lightly, but uh, just to emphasize the point is, you know, we, everybody likes to do back tests and everything else. I don't like to do back tests. I like to do replays. Back tests are inaccurate. It's as if you're going to trade rules built into some system with no emotion. You're not going to be there. You're not going to pay attention to drawdowns, run ups. You're never going to close a trade early. You're never going to cancel out an entry, and you're going to trade it 24 hours a day or whatever. Okay. No matter what news is coming out, that is that is that would be stupid. You would not do that, okay? Um, so therefore, you can't trust a back test result that does that because it means nothing because you won't do it. So one thing you want to do is pull up a website like Forex Factory or Investing.com or whatever, and pull up a schedule and look at the different reports coming out, and go to the history of each day and do what's called a market replay. Um, there's certain platforms I like a lot. There's certain ones I don't. There's there's something I like about just about every platform. There's something I don't like about every platform. One of my favorite things about the NinjaTrader platform is you can do a market replay. You can go and you can download data from instruments, and you can replay in fast forward. And you can go as fast or you can go you know slow or you can go like 500 seconds at a time. Okay, I mean you can make you can make it go really fast or really slow. And so market replay is awesome because, one, you can't cheat. You can't look at the other side of the chart. You see the bars develop as they would develop in real time. And you also can sort of pause every day. Like, let's say you're like looking at the last month. You can pause every day and look at the calendar and go, what's coming out today? <laughs> what might I do? And you can even sort of save yourself a little bit on this, okay? You can go in and, you know, you can maybe cover up the right side of the results. But just know what events happened that day and how that might have affected your trading. So you get accurate replay results. We'll be right back after this message. Commercial. You take a hands-on approach to managing your investment strategy. You're always looking for the next trading opportunity to magnify your perspective. Direction Shares connects sophisticated traders with a powerful array of ETFs from a wide range of asset classes. The markets may go up and down, and you want tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk 
of shorting and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor, Foresight Fund Services, LLC. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Recently, Basil Chapman has had some outstanding trades in his newsletter, The Opening Call. Each morning by 9 a.m., Basil uploads his newsletter to the TFNN servers so that his subscribers can access his expert trading advice. Basil gives his take on the direction of key indices and updates any active trades that his subscribers are currently in. Just recently, Basil's subscribers closed out a short position in Chipotle Mexican Grill, CMG, for more than an $86 profit per share, over a 20% gain in just one position. If you'd like to try out Basil Chapman's newsletter, The Opening Call, then visit the front page at TFNN.com and click Trading Newsletters. There you'll find Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, where you can request a free sample copy. Also, don't miss Basil's program, The Tiger Technician's Hour, Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. Eastern, on TFNN. Tom O'Brien's weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, has helped subscribers for over 10 years navigate the high-risk world of exploring and producing gold companies. And now's a great time to sign up for a free month-long trial to see the kind of insight that Tom delivers for his subscribers on a weekly basis. Every Monday, Tom O'Brien issues a quick update on the metal market, giving you his take on the HUI, XAU, GLD, dollar bonds, and much more. Tom follows Monday's update with a full gold report which is delivered to subscribers Tuesday afternoon with detailed coverage of 24 separate gold or metal stocks as well as another 10 to 15 stocks that he lets you know are on his potential watch list. Get your month-long free trial to the gold report today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Don't spend another year navigating the metal markets on your own. Act early in 2013 and make the most of your gold and metal market investments. Join David White as he keeps you up to date on the latest tech stocks while he uses his Power Law Vector Indicator to identify the best trades. The Power Trading Hour, next on TFNN. All right, folks, we're going back here to the Diagnostic Trading Hour. So we're last looking there at the pound dollar, and let's move on up to settlement. And again, I was talking about market replay. And so if you go back and you want to test the system out, you need to replay it, not back test it, because you need to be involved in the trading decisions, because you're going to be involved in the trading decisions going forward. Even on a robot, which I don't know any robots that people really trade successfully, uh, beyond you know pure arbitrage algorithms. But uh, not retail traders, okay? And so if you're going to be involved, you need to be involved. So either go backwards on your chart or use something like market replay, pull up Forex calendars, pull up earnings announcements, pull up things like that and go, well, how would this affect my decision? What should I do? Should I get out of my trade? Because an announcement's coming out in five minutes. Probably so. So don't just go, oh, that trade would have lost because it flew up, you know. Come on. I mean, be realistic. You would have got out of the trade, or you would have hedged the trade, or maybe you wouldn't have, and now you realized and you learned a lesson from it. But you need to really simulate reality while you're doing this. Um, let's see here. Let's go in and check out. We got that. We got all these. Let's look at it. We got a couple more pairs. We can check out dollar CAD, dollar franc, dollar yen. So dollar CAD uh, moved on up to half a deviation, came back down almost to settlement, and then right on back up to half a deviation, just chilling out 
after doing a major reversal, really having a hard time finding buy orders above that high that happened early this morning. And I'm uh, not expecting a massive move on dollar cat at this point in the day. Uh, this would even be a very possible good uh, reversal trade, uh, short trade on the market that you could go in and do. Like selling a 1.43, you know, O oh, that expires at 2 o'clock, right? So that's a very, very potential trade uh, to look at. Just when you see charts, you start seeing things like that that add up. That could be a good trade just to go in and sort of go counter trend for the next few minutes. Uh, of course, the fact is it has to have enough value to make it worth it for you to do it on there. And um, so when I'm looking at it, I'd pull up each one of those pieces and uh, go in and look at, you know, say Forex binaries, and then I'd be looking at dollar CAD. And then pull up the two o'clock expiration. Is there anything above this? I'd really like to get above 4031. There's not right now. But earlier, when the market was moving, there was more time in the market. That might be the time to really be picking that trade out. And so at this point, you may have to move on down to say three o'clock and see if you see something with a little more value. You can get a 433 for like twenty-one dollars. It expires at one o'clock. See right there. And then if it were to go up and actually hit your strike. Hit this new high, break and make a new high, get out of the trade. But that's not a bad trade at all. Uh, I mean, it's a great resistance area. It's above the deviation level. The market fell and fell down. After that, it's been trying to climb up to it the entire day, and it's taken its sweet little time to do it. And the FX markets only have an hour left until they close. So, selling a 104.33, 3 o'clock expiration for about uh, 21, 22 bucks, uh, getting out at about 50. Getting you pretty close to a one-to-one -one reward to risk ratio. I guess that's uh, that's my pick, uh, just based on the charts here. So I'll go in, I'll throw that trade on, and uh, we'll wrap up the show here in just a few minutes. Uh, but so got that one in, and then let's wrap up. Look at dollar franc and dollar cad. Just do a quick review. Up to one, almost basically a one from high to low. If you measure low to high, you got a one deviation. Flying on back down, and then let's check out dollar yen. Dollar yen hit a one deviation, fell right off that deviation marker, and uh, looks like it's closing on out. So I got my trade filled in. I'm gonna go ahead now. And I'm gonna put a buyback. I'm gonna buy this book back at five bucks. I'm just gonna let time work in my favor and flip it around and uh, collect some premium. All right, y'all have a good day, and I will see you tomorrow right here on the Diagnostic Trading Hour at TFNN.com and TFNN.MOBI. Nowhere, spelled N-O-W-H-E-R-E. -E. At one point, we've all been there. Whether it be our health, career, or our finances, some might be there right now. So where are you when it comes to your trading and investing? Better yet, where would you like to be? The good news? I can take you from nowhere to now here right now. Same letters, N-O-W-H-E-R-E, -E, just a totally different emphasis and focus. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes with TFNN, and on July 25th at 6.30 p.m., I'm going to share with you a trading strategy that I began on May 10th when the S&P was at 1627 and closed at the same price eight weeks later. That's right, the S&P went nowhere versus a trading strategy that produced a 100% hypothetical return in that same period of time, and it's now here for you. Subscribers to my daily newsletter service, Mastering Probability, have free access to this exciting live workshop. The trend is your friend. All the details are on the homepage of TFNN.com. Decisions shape your destiny, and your trading destiny is now here for you.